Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was very good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you. Now, sit, sit, sit. Yeah. Yeah. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Ed Taylor, Vice Provost and Dean of the Undergraduate Academic Affairs, who will moderate our dialogue with the Dalai Lama. Your Holiness, on behalf of the big shots, I would like to thank you. What's up? On behalf of? I didn't get S several months ago, Your Holiness, we had the honor and pleasure of meeting with your personal emissary, Lama Tenzin. Mm. Lama Tenzin complained, conveyed, <laughs> your desire to meet with students. <laughs> he conveyed. He conveyed. He conveyed your belief that our students across this region would be outstanding ambassadors for peace and justice and compassion. Your Holiness, our students from across the region are here. And I can tell you on their behalf, not one of them believes that they can earn a degree without studying. That's not. We have questions for you, and we appreciate your desire to dialogue with us today. Our first question. Good afternoon, Your Holiness. Thank you for joining us here in Seattle. My name is Kanchana Senaviratna, and I'm a business student at the University of Washington in Tacoma. My question is, what's the simplest act of compassion with the most positive effect? Simplest, most effective. I don't know. <laughs> My bad. That last year, most effective. Most positive effect. Most positive. Most positive effect. I don't know. I think basically, as I mentioned already, the, I think, pay more attention about our inner world. That means a world of psychology, emotions, and thoughts. And also, I think you're from India. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, oh. Uh, then, of course, they, uh, usually I describe India's ancient treasure. There is some literature about different aspects of emotion. Although ancient time, these things, uh, uh, as I say, they, uh, start a part of religion, part of philosophy. But usually, I make sort of three parts. Three, uh, for example, Buddhism, I usually usually make three parts, three divisions. Buddhist science, Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist religion. So, Buddhist philosophy, uh, I think in some extent, but certainly Buddhist religion is from Buddhist, nothing to do with other people. But Buddhist science is something, hello there. Mm, but there is something common. So in the Buddhist science, science of external things, matters, particles, uh, not only Buddhist, but ancient Indian thought, there are a lot of sort of explanation about external matters, particles, and uh, internal, mat internal sort of thing, that means human consciousness or human mind or human emotions. So maybe uh, 
Now, uh, from the West, among the scientists, scientists who are working about human uh, brain, neuron, and human emotion, now begin to look more detailed information from ancient, uh, 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 ancient sort of uh, Indian tradition. So I think useful to to sort of to get some information. Then uh, experiment by yourself. So that much I can say. Otherwise, I don't know. <laughs> Good afternoon, Your Holiness. I'm Ming, and I'm from Singapore. I'm a student at the University of Washington, Seattle, and I'm very honored to be in your presence. I would like to know, what is the ultimate vision you have for the whole world, which you feel would be realistically achievable in the next few decades? Vision continues, I think within this century, if we make effort, mainly through education, I think more peaceful world, more friendly, more compassionate world can be achieved within this century. The, sorry, the demilitarized world, that I don't know. But certainly, you see, conflict can reduce. So I think better world, that is very possible, realistically speaking. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all I want is to add one thing. In in money matter, in material sort of uh, field, one problem. Uh, gap, rich and poor. Not only global level, but also national level. Look, United States, uh, I think the billion, number of billionaires increasing, yes. but the poorer section of the people still remain poor. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Mm. Uh, I think Singapore may be better. Mm. <laughs> Almost like a city state, isn't it? Uh, uh, I think this gap may be less. I don't know. Uh, otherwise, in India, now, unfortunately, in China also, gap rich and poor, rapidly increasing. So, this uh, not only morally wrong, but practically also source of problem. I think we seriously address you see, this problem. That's, I think, very important. So here also is the compassion makes important role. important role. The richer family or richer world they take serious concern about the uh, needs of the poorer, poorer sector of the world and within the nation, within the nation also as well. And give education, give training, give what is it, uh, skills. Uh, skills or equipment. Uh, and should not look down. Must give them confidence, self-confidence. If wealthier people, wealthier nation, a little bit because of the look down, then that creates, I think from birth, we have no feeling of inferior, superior. But eventually, we cre our creation 
One time I was in South Africa, met one family. I I, 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 visited uh, I visited one family. There, uh, the family member introduced me as a teacher. Then, of course, just after the change, changing of the regime, uh, become democratic country. Uh, so I mentioned, now your constitution now change. Everybody equal. No longer racial divisions, uh, divisions or discriminations. But mentally or emotionally, uh, still take time to adjust. adjust. Then I, I express now your black community must take the opportunity fully and through education, through training, through self-confidence. Then that teacher uh, expressed to me, our brain is uh, inferior. We cannot match with white people. Then I told him, at that moment, I feel very sad. I felt very sad. That's, that's the source of problem now. I told him, absolutely wrong. From birth, our brain is same. Different color is just a superficial. Basically, we are same human being, same potential. Uh, same capacity. Uh, I made some example, a Tibetan case on these things. Then, if we get the same opportunity, we can prove we are same, we are equal. Wrong discussion with him. Then, finally, with a so long size, size, long size, whispering, whispering to me, now he convinced we are same. That moment, I felt some kind of tremendous relief. At least one person's sort of mental attitude changed now. So, no. <clears throat> so, so therefore, you see, the richer side or more successful side pay more respect, showing genuine sense of concern same human brother and sisters. That way, the other side also eventually, you see, gain self-confidence. Meantime, provide education, provide training, provide equipment, provide money. The, the, the weaker side of the section, weaker side of the people, instead of frustration, anger, then violence, instead of that trend, Stand for confidence, work hard, study hard. That's the way to change this gap. So I think our youth, one, our sort of, I think, responsibility is to, to, to look seriously about this gap. That much, that I want to, to share. Now, now you. <laughs> yes. My name is Eva Combs, and I'm a student in the Masters of Education program at Seattle University. My question is, how do we show compassion to someone who has been harming other people? I mean, other people. Oh. Now, as I mentioned before, compassion, bias to compassion, unbiased compassion two things. Bias to compassion, generally, I think, a biological factor, biological product. Bio biological product. Now, that take as a seed. Then, with help of knowledge, fuller knowledge, knowledge of consequences, 
long-term, short-term consequences. With the help of that kind of intelligence, then our compassion can be unbiased. Now here, that kind of is a compassion with help of wisdom or knowledge uh, can extend towards your enemy. There is reasons. Uh, the, the, the person who create harms on other. Actually, uh, I think out of negative emotion. Uh, so there is sort of reason to feel concern. No, compassion. I, I think in a secular way, I think that, that's, that's the thing. Oh. But maybe uh, from... I think it's still love so much today. Theistic, non-theistic. Uh, not mentioned here. Uh, I think s some other occasion I mentioned. Now there are theistic religion, non-theistic religion, all teach us compassion and forgiveness, tolerance, these things. Uh, uh, so according to that, then of course, the two things, the victim side and the Khazar. Perpetrator of the harm. Mm -hmm. the, in the long term, there's more reason to, uh, to take concern because, firstly, according to theistic, that person now really against God's wish. So negative consequences have to face. The non-theistic religious viewpoint, uh, that person now accumulate negative karma, negative because of that condition. So sooner or later, that person have to face negative consequences. So there is sufficient reason to feel concern. The victim side, already victims are victimized. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, from the theistic viewpoint, God may have more willing, more care. Uh, and from the non-theistic religious viewpoint, the he, he or she already closed one chapter of previous action. Have some sense? <laughs> then, then the secular way, I think the wrongdoing person, even secular law, harming other, killing other, stealing other, uh, sexual abuse, Telling lies. These are secular laws, right? Even from, uh, even from the secular viewpoint, these are wrongdoing. So as a result, he or she have to face the consequences. So there's a reason to feel concern. And then on that basis, develop sense of uh, compassion, sense of concern. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, Your Holiness. It's an honor to be in your presence. My name is Morgan Weaver, and I study psychology at the University of Washington. Seattle is known for its emphasis on environmental awareness. Do you consider the green trend to be a luxury for the rich? And what can we do green to maintain trend. a balance? between compassion for other people and our planet. Taking care environment. Huh? The environment issue 
uh, for me something new new subject way. A, new understanding. a new understanding when we were in Tibet Tibet dry climate cold climate small population every water can drink <laughs> no problem <laughs> so we have no idea uh, polluted water no idea hmm? uh, so eventually uh, as a result of uh, meeting with scientist or expert about ecology then uh, I noticed now this is very serious uh, this planet of six billion human being is the only home of six billion human being. Moon looks nice in dark, in dark sort of dark night. Uh, oh, lot of sort of poems about 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 moon. But if we uh, lost our own home and try to settle in, in, in moon, hopeless. <laughs> uh, I think, therefore, this planet, blue planet, is the only home of six billion human beings and the rest of the other sentient beings. So now, I think the global warming Maybe due to sun and the position of our planet, some changing, that beyond our control. I think five billion years ago, uh, this this planet not Hazota, gradually forming like that. Uh, so in future, uh, after a few billions of years. Even our sun will soon disappear. Uh, uh, so there's something different question. But to uh, some extent, due to our own behavior, some sort of that uh, effect on the, uh, on the, on the global what's it, warming. So this is very, very serious now, very serious. So, and another factor, see the, because uh, another factor is bloodshed, which I mentioned. These, when we saw in television, uh, some killing, bleeding, immediately striking on our mind. Oh, how bad killing. But environment degradation. Uh, uh, degen degenerate. Degeneration or degradation. Uh, uh, degradation is invisible. That without much notice, one day it really effect on our breathing, our lung, our eyes, then maybe too late. So therefore, it is very more serious. We have to take much pay, pay much attention. Uh, then, this is not a matter of justice to talk, matter of practice. Therefore, the taking concern about the environment should be part of our daily life. Now, for my own, my own little silly contribution for that, uh, I think now last a few decades, I never take kasachuti. Uh, any bath, yeah. But but tapes away. Uh, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. Only shower. Yeah. <laughs> Only shower. Oh. Uh, although the shower, uh, the, the every day, uh, one morning, one evening, there's a bit of luxury. But, but otherwise, you see, <laughs> only shower, never sort of use the tap in order to save water. <laughs> My own small contribution, maybe <laughs> silly. <laughs> yeah. So, they taking care the sort of shortage of water, and also the, uh, the electricity, all these, I think, should be part of our daily life. So it is very, very important, very, very important. Now, compassion, what connection? Compassion, 
Now, this sense of responsibility, although individual effort, not necessarily very, very significant, but one person practice that, 10 person, 100 person, 1,000 person, then make differences. So initiative must come from individual. So, so here, sense of responsibility. I usually call sense of global responsibility. Sense of responsibility, well-being of six billion human beings. So here, connection, sense of concern of other. And also sense of concern of oneself also there. <laughs> Is it? Actually, compassion. First, love oneself. That's very essential. Some individual self-hatred survey. It's very bad. If such person who a little bit with a negative attitude towards oneself, such person impossible to extend love, compassion towards other. So first, maximum care oneself, then for that reason, extend love to others. Okay. Mm. <laughs> like me. Oh. Your Holiness. <laughs> Good afternoon. I think I speak on behalf of everyone here when I say thank you for coming to speak with us today. That's right. That's right. My name is Ryan Mayock. I'm a student at the University of Washington. After I graduate, I would like to go into the field of international medicine and work with uh -huh. communities in impoverished countries. Oh. My, my question for you is, related to this matter, as HIV continues to devastate populations in Africa, what do you think we can do to get people internationally to show the compassion and love necessary to turn this disease around? Firstly, of course, uh, I think medicine. There are already some research, I think millions of dollars is spending. I think these should, should, they should continue and should bring some uh, result, some medicine. Uh, then educate, education people in this area. Then some cases, I think these, uh, of course, not, not, not the blood. But it's a blood, blood transfusion. Uh, blood transfusion. Oh, through that way also, you see, sometimes it's happening. But, it's, but in most cases, uh, I was told through sexual contact, isn't it? So, should make available rubber. <laughs> 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 Then, then another thing, then another thing, I think the society, a community, uh, should not reject or should not look down these patients. And also those uh, prisoners, I noticed you see, prisoners, you see, once they, because they serve in jail, then people consider these are something bad, a bad element or bad guy. And they themselves then feel something now no longer belong to the community. community. So then the sense of responsibility, sense of duty, uh, much of the damage. So I heard, as a result of some conference, about the difficulties of the uh, prisoners. Uh, I heard, you see, they, uh, after the jail sentence completed, they returned to the society, they, uh, some sort of uh, extra difficulties. So these are, uh, so therefore, the society must give love 
and what's a day? Accept them. Uh, accept them as a part of society. Give them hope. Give them sense of community. Give them sense of responsibility. That I think is important. Otherwise, I don't know. I'm not expert. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, one. Well, okay. Good afternoon, Your Holiness. Um, my name is Sarah Cook, and I'm a French major at the University of Washington. My question for you is that some people tend to be less compassionate by nature. Is there a way to cultivate compassion for people in their lives to feel more compassionate towards others? I believe at the, uh, the beginning of our life, the beginning of our childhood, I don't think there's much differences. Then after birth, from the first day, and weeks and months, then due to different environment, different condition, may become differences, I feel. Of course, we need the further investigation, research. So that's why uh, it is extremely important to provide the young child to provide maximum affection from parent and spend more time, the mother, particularly the mother, spend more time with the child. And instead of some other milk, the mother's own milk, I, I think it's much better. So that is the, I think, effective uh, precautions for the method is it to uh, to sustain the uh, of the affection or compassion as a product of biological fact, biology biology right so then later if someone uh, due to uh, lack of these sort of atmosphere at the initial stage then becomes something very difficult. Then how to deal with such people, such child? I don't know. I think an expert may have some, some, uh, something to say. Otherwise, I don't know. If I met such things, then I may take drast drastic measure. <laughs> <laughs> Because I can, I, I may lose patience easily. <laughs> so then, <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know. But but then, such case, patience is real sort of the important matter. Time factor. Something goes wrong. Now recover. I think from good to bad change good from good to bad but quite easy from bad to good take time and need more effort so naturally need more patience so some the, the other day when i my flight from tokyo to seattle the whole night one, I mean, one, 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 one couple, two children. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, very nice. I also see, uh, give, some uh, give some candies uh, <laughs> to the young, you see, the young boy. I think boy. Boy <laughs> and one girl. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, then, uh, the whole night, the elder one sleep quietly, but the younger one uh, always is shouting, crying, and moving like that. Then eventually, father 
It's just, you see, remain silence in sleep. <laughs> the mother, whole night, oh, taking care. When the child, you see, shouting, to take and doing something, <laughs> you know, walking like that. So that, at that time, I felt, oh, I'm that, because of it. If I were. Uh, if I were, you see, in that position. Uh, <laughs> I may not have that sufficient <laughs> patience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Oh, I think it's the last one. Good afternoon, Your Holiness. Oh. It is an honor to be here, and thank you for that. My name is Lisa Moody, and I'm from Pierce College, Fort Silicon Campus, oh. and I'm studying criminal justice. Criminal justice. Criminal justice. I am a three-year survivor of domestic violence, and after I graduate, I plan to use my life experience and my studies to help other victims and mm -hmm. survivors. My question today is, with all of the discontent, crime, racism, and hate, what can we as a people do to incorporate compassion to make a difference in the lives of others and our society? Like another problem, uh, we need long-term, what should I say, solution and short-term solution. Long-term, as we already you see, touched, the in ed through education, we must make kazoda promotion awareness. or awareness of these inner value. So long-term, that's the only way. Uh, peaceful society cannot bring by regulation, by order, by police, difficult. Only thing, individual, volunteer sort of initiative. That we need awareness, what is the value of these inner value. Uh, so through education, that's long term. The short term, again, I don't know. I have uh, no particular sort of experience. Uh, perhaps uh, some sort of uh, connection or relevant, relevant. My experience uh, visit uh, uh, Northern Ireland the victims as sort of two religious sort of group uh, and sort of killing uh, so some victims. Uh, I have been there, I think, two or three times. Uh, one occasion I visit. I invited the group of victims. Uh, when I enter that room, everybody's face, no smile, much tense, uh, something like ready to fight, that kind of, sort of atmosphere. And each other, full of hatred. Both sides. No? Uh, both sides. The victim, hmm? Victims from two sides. Uh, and we sat down and talk. Uh, firstly, listen their sort of experience, very horrible sort of experience. And firstly, I tried to make a sort of a calm atmosphere, some smile, some jokes like that. Then eventually that atmosphere become a little warmer. Then gradually some serious sort of exchange. 
Then after one year or one, one or two years, I visit another time, the, met these victims second time, big different. Right from the beginning, these victims then smile. Uh, and one, uh, I, uh, I describe my hero. One, uh, one man, I think his age, I think 13 or 14, I think 13, uh, a rubber bullet hit here. Instantly, his eye sight lost. That boy, the, of course, the, because of the, because of the uh, pain, uh, because of lost consciousness, 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 and then when consciousness has come, already he, uh, he was in hospital. The moment consciousness come, his only feeling, no anger, no hatred, but only feeling, now no longer I cannot see my mother's face. He told me himself. Hmm. So as a result, now that person, although blind, I met at the first, first meeting, there was a group of people, that person I met, and his face smiled. Then my second visit, or second, or after, after a few years, then after a few years I met, now he already got beautiful wife and two children, very beautiful two girls. So that's, I, that's also the, so the mental attitude really makes big differences. So same victim, some keep anger, hatred, the rest of their life, uh, oh, years and years, much tense, difficult. This boy, right from the beginning, no anger, no hatred, something like that. Therefore, his life, although no eyesight, blind, but always smile. As a result, very happy family there. So perhaps, you see, uh, you see, I mean, this story, right? And, and sharing or talk, because of that, tell these stories, if possible, if you see some really troubled area, I think worthwhile to invite this, this my hero. I think really wonderful, really wonderful. I think outside world, not much because of that, uh, aware this person. So, so I think just make sort of friendship, make sort of make easy. Uh, first, our sight must reach out. reach out. Then gradually there are tremendous sort of, because of that, frustration feeling reduced. Then we can make because of that, more, serious more serious discussion. That's I feel. Then, of course, the, 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 the discrimination on the basis of color. These are old fashioned, outdated. <laughs> I think better education, better awareness, better mixed way. Intermix. Uh, in the mix. Then I think these will gradually will, will, will change. <laughs> I feel like that. Thank you. Hmm? Last then, okay, la last question now. Good afternoon, Your Holiness. Thank you for giving us all a chance to have this dialogue. My name is Mary Harper. I'm a student at Edmonds Community College. I am, have, have international studies from the University of Washington as my background. My question is this. Compassion and civic responsibility are words with broad interpretations and many meanings. Is there a universal definition 
effective enough to connect people despite differences of culture, religion, class, age, and gender. Oh. I think civil civic casa, civic. Civic responsibility. Ah. Civic responsibility. Civic responsibility. That means I think certain responsibility, certain res certain sense of responsibility for the society. The basic human nature is social animal. And then in modern time, there's a certain rules and regulations in the, for the citizen of the community. Marbe. So, uh, uh, first of all, I don't know the exact meaning of this English word, because it's a civic, civic responsibility, I don't know. So the, as far as I know, roughly, so that kind of sort of sense of responsibility. Then, as I already mentioned, the, unless you have the sense of caring or sense of concern of others' well-being, that kind of sense of responsibility is difficult to, to develop. So clearly, this has a connection. And that's it. Oh, now compassion. I think compassion, the sense of concern of other suffering. I think that part, same. I think according to all religious tradition, love and compassion, I think same. Uh, but then, uh, with concept of God, uh, compassion, uh, then the, what is it, the wisdom side, uh, wisdom side, then different. The according to the religion, compassion, the other part of the compassion, the philosophical side, different. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, now, non-believer, or six billion human beings, in terms of six billion human beings, we must find uh, universal, ka, universal way. So that is on the basis of our common sense, uh, or common experience. Now children, the affection between mother and the child, universal. Even common with those mammals whose, whose uh, life depend on uh, mother's care, dogs and cats, we same level, same, isn't it? Same pattern, huh? So then we, human beings, with this, because of intelligence, now the scientific finding more compassionate mind, the brain function better. And the physical, so the words the health also better. So now these, the scientific sort of finding, now already some data is there. So I think we can use these things. These are universal, universally accepted. So use these as the basis of explanation importance of compassion. That's, I think, a secular way. That's, I think, very, very important. That concludes our discussion with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Please join me in thanking him for his time and wisdom. Thank you, thank you, thank you.